Game. Yeah, it, you know, I always worry about this week in particular, the middle week of the three-week session that you that you're allowed to have. But honestly, the the three practices that we have had this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, have been the best practices we've had. You know, from fall all the way up to today, that the intensity has been great. Um, the, the focus has been really good. The, the, you know, the fundamentals of the game have been played out well. You know, whenever you play intra-squad scrimmages, you know, if the pitching dominates the hitting, then hitting is it bad hitting or great pitching? If the hitting is good, is it great hitting or bad pitching? And so I try not to worry too much about the results of the pitching and hitting, and just make sure we're playing good fundamental baseball and guys know what they're doing, where to go, and with the ball and so forth. And They've been tremendous. So, you know, when we get to next week, you know, you're one week out now from opening day, so that starts to build that, that excitement level. So I think we're right where we're, we should be. Um, still haven't, you know, decided on starting position players yet, but uh, we're getting closer to that point, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of guys making a lot of improvements. So I'm pretty excited about, the, about what we got going here. Does the know it's competition good. lend to that intensity? You know, uh, you'd like to think that the pitchers that our hitters are going to face are as good a pitching as they're going to face all year. You'd like to think that the, that the hitters that our pitchers are facing are going to be the best hitters that they're going to face all year. And uh, that's, that's the idea. You know, when you have a bunch of guys hurt and you're limited on how much you can do, that, that's always disappointing. But as, as I told you, we've been healthy. Hopefully we will stay healthy. And because of that, the quality of the pitching versus quality hitting has been really a good thing to see. There's been there's been moments of excellence offensively and there's been moments of excellence on the mound. And the defense has really worked hard. We've been really focusing with a bunch of new players on making them understand just how important defense is. Although our football team proved it wrong this year, you know, you usually need just phenomenal defense to, to win the championships. But um, I guess if you score 48 points a game, you don't have to worry about that too much. I can't promise you we're going to score 48 runs a game or even 15 runs a game. I think we're going to have a good offensive team, but we're going to need to pitch and play defense as well. I know it's early in these first few practices, but have there been a few kind of standouts in your eye that have really Well, talked? you know, uh, I talked a long time on media day about Zach Mathis, and he goes out there the first two scrimmages and hits home runs each day. Um, which was great to see Daniel Cabrera. I'm trying him in the leadoff spot. He let off one of the scrimmages with a home run off of off of uh, Labus, which you know Labus made a good pitch, and and Daniel went down and got it, put it in the stands. Um, you know we're uh, you know we've had some guys stand out. Some guys are you know, actually, to be honest with you, one of the guys that stands out has been on the pitching staff. Who I did I think I mentioned him briefly when you, we talked about left-handed pitchers, but a young man by the name of Brandon Kaminer. Looks like he has made a big jump from what he what he did this fall. He uh, he he's thrown well in the scrimmage games. I think he's thrown twice, and then he had some simulated games before that. And he just seems to be getting better and better. You know, he's he's throwing the ball with a lot, a lot of uh, confidence. He's throwing 90 miles an hour left-handed, throwing a lot of strikes. Um, so his role just can, could potentially continue to expand as we go into the season. But most everybody's performing about like I would have expected. I think Cole Henry is right on target. Marceau's right on target. You know, we Labus gave up a couple of solo home runs that one day um, to Cabrera and Mathis. But after that, pitched really well. Um, Jaden Hill bounced back and had a really good outing his last time. So a lot of, you know, Fontenot looks like he's in midseason form already. And he's generally a slow starter. But he's been throwing the ball exceptionally hard. I tell you, Chase Costello is a guy that looks like he's made a big jump so far. So that would be another really good arm if we could add that to the to the the group. You know, the what would you call him? A herd? The herd of pitchers. The bevy. Talking to Mathis the other day, he seems like a, just a genuine baseball guy. Just just loves the game. Cody, you have him pegged right. I, I honestly have never seen him without a smile on his face. He just thinks he died and went to heaven being here at LSU. You know, he played junior college ball last year and got any kind of knock, but they don't have the resources like we have at LSU. And, you know, people are taking care of the field for him. You know, he's used to taking care of the field himself. 
Um, you know, he gets nice uniforms to wear for practice. He's hitting white baseballs, you know, brand new baseballs. He just thinks he died and went to heaven, and he, he just loves to play. And I, I tell you, LSU fans are going to fall in love with this kid. He plays the game full speed. You know, I, I always joke and say that Mathis plays baseball the way my wife shops all day long. You know, he just he loves the game and just can't get enough of it. And he'll, you know, when, he, when I recruited him, he talked about how much he loved to hit, that he spends every waking possible moment in the batting cages. I said, well, you're going to have to focus on defense as well. And, you know, he's, he surprised me with his defensive skill. It's really good. And now he's taken a lot of pride in his defense. He sees everybody else working so hard around him, and he's worked really hard at And there's not a game goes by in their squad game where he doesn't stand out in some way. He made a couple of diving plays in one game the other day. And, He's just a, he's a wonderful kid to be around. You know, you just can't help but be in a good mood when you're around him. He's just always laughing. Look at him over there. He's over there holding court right now. Everybody's <laughs> laughing at him. That's just who he is. What do you envision for Devin Fauna this year? He's, he's drawn the ability to save, but he also yeah. had an outing at the very end where he stayed really yeah. long. Play. Yeah, so we're keeping open-minded about it at this point, Wilson. Um, obviously, the thought of having power arms at the end of the game is a very enticing thought. And he certainly fits that category, as does Jaden Hill, perhaps Nick Stores, uh, perhaps Costello. I mean, there's there's some we have some, you know, guys that can throw the ball pretty hard. And the more depth we have with that, the the more you could perhaps use a guy like Fontenot in a in a more versatile role. Um, he's been throwing two inning outings in our inner squad games, so we're not. We know we don't want to leave the season and pre, you know, leave his all his energy in preseason. But at the same time, we want to build him up a little bit. Um, you know, I was I was not surprised, but you know, Fontenot had always been pretty much a one pitch pitcher. But his slider's gotten better, and he's been working on his changeup. Sometimes he throws his changeup a little bit too hard. But if you want to extend and pitch multiple innings, it means you have to go through the lineup a couple of times. It takes more than one pitch to be able to do that. So he was kind of pigeonholed into that role because he really didn't have a great secondary pitch or two great, great secondary pitches. Now his slider has really gotten better, so I think that allows him to go a little bit longer. If the changeup keeps coming around, then we'll, we'll see what the needs are as we go through the season. Not only in his development as of his pitches, but just in the way he carries himself in the first like yeah. How much do you think he's grown in that way? Well, it's it's amazing. I've been doing this now. This is my 38th year, and you, you just you watch these youngsters start as freshmen, and their eyes are as big as grapefruits. And then as the years go by, one year under their belt, two years under their belt, when they're seniors, I mean they're walking around as grown adults now, you know, and they've seen everything that that they could possibly have seen. Nothing surprises them. Their confidence is unflappable. Now Devin is in his third year here, but his maturation has been enormous and uh, you know everything's a learning experience sometimes you have to go through some failures to to really appreciate the success and um, you know he's had his share of ups and downs more ups than downs and I just think his best days are ahead of him I think we're gonna watch him pitch in the major league someday was it Hughes that had that hit at the end of Monday scrimmage with the bases loaded? yeah he got a base hit up the middle how is that you know listen how's how is never gonna be the 350 hitter with 10 home runs, okay? We know that. We just want him to be a tough out, you know, and, and a clutch hitter. When Austin Nola was a freshman here, when I, I don't know if people will remember back that far to 2009, Cobble will, but we made, I made a very, I, I like to call it a bold decision, but a lot of people thought it was very controversial when I moved DJ LeMay to second base and put Austin Nola in as a freshman 40 games into the season. And we went on to win the national championship, but Nola hit, hit 230 that year. But I don't know if there was anybody more valuable to play than Nola. He got the game-winning hit against Baylor in the pivotal winner bracket game in the, soup, I mean in the uh, regular regional in the 11th inning. He, Southern was beating us two to one in the two outs in the seventh inning of game one of the regional. He got the base hit to tie that game. He got some clutch walks. And that's what I've explained to Hal. You don't have to hit for a high average in order to be a very productive offensive player. You know, maybe, maybe it's because of my personal experiences. You know, I always kid and say that Ron Maestri got me in the NCAA record book. 
most consecutive games, batting ninth in the order, okay? And I tell Hal that I have an appreciation for guys that have a role in the lineup. You might be the nine hole hitter, you might not hit for high average, but if you can hit and run, you can drop a bunt, you can draw an important walk, you get a clutch hit like the other day, you said he ended the scrimmage with a bases loaded two run single up the middle. And he's been putting up some really good at bats in the early season. This could be one of those situations we were just talking about, a couple years under your belt. I think, you know, there's a ceiling on how, how much we could ever expect out of Hal. You know, he's not going to knock the bleachers down, might hit an occasional home run, but, you know, if he plays good defense and he's a tough out at the plate, then if we have enough hitting around him, he's going to be a real asset for our team. What are some of your first game concerns you have to get over and deal with in terms of, like, is it defense, is it? I don't really have any concerns necessarily. I just I'm always glad when the first game is over with. It's the mo it's it's like the game where you're most nervous, the most pressure you feel all year. I've been fortunate to coach a national championship games, plenty of games in Omaha. Never more nervous in opening day of the season because it's the first time you've played against a team in a different color uniform since last June. And you you know you think your team's ready, you've done everything you can do to prepare them. And then all of a sudden, the stands are full, the bright lights are on, all the media is here. It matters who scores more runs, you know, on, on a given day, on the day. And you don't, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. But win or lose, you know that there's 55 more games after that. And there's no question in my mind that this team will continue to improve as the year progresses. But I, I, you, you always like to get off to a good start, and I'm hoping that we will. So I don't have any major, major, major concerns like. Oh, what are we going to do about this position or that position? I feel like we've got the personnel. It's just a matter of figuring out which is the best, which are the best combination to go with. Why did you push for the creation of the pitching lab, and how much have y'all wanted to integrate technology into the things that y'all do around here? Well, you know, there's an old saying, you know, you either adapt and grow or you've, you get left behind, you know? Um, and, you know, I listen, I was, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, played in the 70s, and started coaching in the 80s, and, and now we're in the 2020s. If, 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 if you don't adapt and learn and keep, roll, you know, keep moving with the times, you'll get left behind. And it's just reality. You know, the reality is that there's technology that's available to you now. It's information. It's not the all-tell-all. All. What's that saying? The all, be all, be all, all, the be all, end all. It's not the be all, end all. I would never just say unequivocally everything that the, that the numbers tell you. You have to go by that. Otherwise, you know, you could put a robot in the in the dugout to manage the team. But the information can be very valuable, and having access to slow motion cameras, and we're, we're, we're actually, <laughs> as we speak, we're putting a new technology to help the hitters into our cage in there where the kids are actually going to wear goggles it's almost like uh, night goggles but there's a virtual reality inside the goggles like we can have videotape of the pitcher that we're going to be facing if we're facing Kumar Rocker from Vanderbilt on Thursday night before the game our players will literally watch him pitch with goggles on as though they're standing in the batter's box and they hold a bat that has a sensor, and they can they can judge whether pitches are strikes or balls, and what the it'll give a reading on the velocity and the kinds of pitches. It's called win reality, and we just entered into a contract with them, and we're converting a room over in the batting cages to give them to give the hitters something that they can use. Is that the answer? I think the answer is still in hard work. You know, going out there on the field and doing it, believing in yourself practicing so that you can perfect your skills and then when the lights go on you got to get the job done when you're between the white lines but all that other stuff helps in preparing them and hey if, if it's out there we want to see if it help if it's helpful we'd be crazy not to good enough okay thank you virtual reality